In this one we're going to have a look at adding authentication to our tests because if you remember we actually wrote our test before we started the section on authentication so I'm suspecting they're probably going to fail right now because we don't have authentication in those requests that we made there. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. Before I deal with that though, we're just going to tackle something which occurred to me and which has been bothering me and that is this. So our supports method in the API token authenticator, I'm going to make an adjustment to this uh, but first off I'll just show you the issue in case you haven't already uh, thought of this yourself. So uh, here we're passing the API token, there's the value and then we just fire off our request, no problem there. If we actually go and change the token... So I'm just removing that last character there. And if we send this off, okay, so then we get invalid credentials. However, if we actually just, I can actually not send the header by unchecking this box here, which means that header won't get sent. If I send it now, okay, so it's getting through authentication because the way we've set this up is we're saying, uh, does this API token um, header key exist? If so, then go on to authentication. If not, then what that means is don't actually use this API token authenticator. This isn't uh, required. And in that case, it means everything's just gonna go through as normal. So this setup really, this actual, the way I've done this, it's exactly the same as what the Symfony documentation, the example in there. However, it works well if you have other authenticators because you can have multiple authenticators in your system so say for example we had one which was a login form authenticator which required email and password what happens is when you send the requests it goes through all of the authenticators until it comes to one which is valid uh, one which applies to that scenario so if we had a system where a dual authentication system where we were using api tokens for hitting the api and if we were using email and password for a web facing application then fine it would get to this one the api token authenticator and then see that it's not required because the x api token header isn't uh, present and so it would just move on to the next authenticator which would be the login form authenticator and attempt to log in that way but we didn't set that up we didn't build that even though you probably would need to build that because in order to get an api token you would need some kind of um, web facing application uh, in there but what I'm going to do is just keep this simple and I'm just going to alter this uh, to make it more applicable to our system which only has one way of authenticating and so I'm using PHP 8 I can use the string starts with function and then on here I'm just going to say request and what you're looking for is get path info and then that will bring you back the path. And so we're saying, does our path start with forward slash API forward slash? And in our case, it does. So let's go and fire off this request again. Okay, so this time we're getting no API token provided because I didn't uncheck the box. But what we do know is that it's got past this stage. This has returned true. Our path does begin with API. And so now it's got to here. So we have that catch all. If we don't have an API uh, token uh, header, then it's still going to fail authentication. So we'll put this back to the way it was and we'll just test happy path first. Okay, so then we get our results. And then what we shall do is check that uh, authentication fails if we remove a character from the token. Okay, good stuff. So I feel much happier about that. So in case you were wondering or suspecting that I'd um, done something which is insecure there, we've now dealt with that and we can move on to sorting out our tests. So here's our products test. Rather than guess at what might fail and what might not fail, the first thing I do with my tests is I just simply run them. So vendor bin PHP unit tests. Okay, so we have some errors, and what I'm seeing here is base table of view not found prox API test API token. 
And so let's go and actually have a look at our migrations. Try and remind ourselves where we got up to. So I'm looking at the last migration, which would have been the last one to be created. So we have actually um, got the API token uh, migration file. So all we need to do, I think, is just go and run our uh, migrations migrate. This has already been done on our development database, so we need to run it for our test database. So the command that you need is this, Symfony console, and what is different is this part here. We're saying environment equals test, and then all the rest is the same, doctrine, migrations, migrate. Let's hit go. So it'll ask you if you're sure, and in fact it's just run straight on, and it's migrated these. So let's go over to the database and check this. Our database was product API because we take the name of our regular dev database and it just uh, pens on the word underscore test to the end of that. And so, as we can see here, we've now got our API token table. So that's all good. I think we can go back and actually run the test and see where it takes us this time. So, if I end up in PHP unit tests. Okay, so we've got a little bit further this time and we're actually getting the message no API token provided. Okay, perfect. So over in products test, let's just take this one step at a time and we'll get our tests into the state that we need them to be in. First thing I'm gonna do is actually create an API token constant. So what was our little file that we used? We created something in order, here we go, generate token. So what I'm gonna do is just say PHP, Generate token, and I shall copy that. And here I'll just create a private constant. I'll call this API token. Okay, so excuse the fact that it's sort of uh, going off the screen now. It's because I have my font quite big in order to record. It just makes it a better experience for the viewers. So next, what we're going to need to do is actually, uh, we're going to create the client differently. And off that client, we should be able to go through the container and get a Doctrine Entity Manager. And we'll do all this in the setup method. And the other things we're going to need is we're going to need a user entity and we're gonna need an API token entity. So, so private, and this will be, we'll take HTTP client interface. And I'll just call that client, and then we'll do the same for uh, entity manager, we'll go with a doctrine entity manager interface, or entity manager interface. That's the one that I want, and we'll call that Entity Manager. And so here we shall uh, create our client. So this client equals this create client. We don't need to pass any options. And then this Entity Manager equals this client. get container and then get doctrine and then get manager and so the first thing I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm just going to actually test that we are getting that entity manager so I'm just going to dump that out here in fact I'll dump them both out this client and this Entity Manager, and we'll go and run the tests. Okay, so that looks like that's working, so I'm happy with that. Now we can move on to actually creating a user entity and a API token entity. And by the way, if you'd like to learn more about testing PHP, then you'll probably love my course, which is called Testing PHP, and it covers loads of different strategies and techniques for testing this stuff, which is essential if you want to take your testing to the next level. User equals new user, and so that comes from app entity user. Here's the rest of the use statements, just in case uh, you didn't quite catch those. So 
the ones that we just pulled in for this recording are this Symphony Contracts HTTP Client HTTP Client Interface and the other one was Doctrine ORM Entity Manager Interface and the others hopefully you should have those from the previous recordings so user we need to set an email um, maybe set a password And then what I need to do is say this entity manager persist. And so that brings it under the entity managers management. And then we actually need to flush this before we create our API token because we need to relate the API token to an already existing user. So we'll say this entity manager flush. Okay, and now we're on to the API token. So. So we set the user to the user which we just created and if I remember rightly we only created those properties. Let's go and have a look. So we created token and user. Yet yeah, we kept it nice and simple. So we didn't do expiry dates or anything like that but those kind of things would be a good idea. So now we're going this entity manager uh, persist API token and this entity manager flush okay great stuff now what we need to do is actually remove these uh, calls here static create client because we've already created our client and we'll also need to add a third um, argument to our request let's just go and have a look at the signature for this so one two three the third argument is an array of options and one of those options being the headers Okay, so I think this should work. Let's actually uh, just test out this one uh, test on its own. Okay, one test for assertion. So that tells me that that works. All we need to do then is just go through the rest of these and actually update them. So I'll do that behind the scenes. You don't need to watch me do all of these. So a quick walk through these, done the same for each one. As you can see, we've added the third argument there, which includes the headers. Let's have a look at a post request. So the post request, we're already passing some options, and that is the JSON, if you recall. And so what we've done is just added another option inside of the options array, and that being the headers. Also notice we're using this client on all of these as well. So the next one, test update product, as you can see, this client request put and again we were already passing in some JSON but we've added another option which is the headers and then here we've also uh, included the headers on test create invalid product and then that was the final test so really we should have one in there uh, to make sure that we're getting an invalid token error or some kind of um, token error if we don't actually pass any authentication. But let's run these anyway. So vendor bin PHP unit tests. Okay, so we now get five tests, 13 assertions. Let's find a nice easy one and we'll just copy this little put here, uh, put request because it's only a small test and we'll adapt this uh, by not passing the correct API token header. So test, um, we'll say invalid token. And so for the API token, we'll just put fake token. And then we want to say assert response status code same. And if you recall for um, bad authentication or failed authentication, we went with a 401. And the actual JSON, if you recall, was message 
and then invalid credentials. And so let's go and run this. Okay, six tests, 15 assertions. Uh, let's just change this to no API token or just something else just to make sure. We should get a failure here because that's not the correct um, uh, message that we get back. So invalid credentials is the correct one. If we weren't actually passing the uh, API token header, then we will get a message saying no API token, but we're actually passing an incorrect one, in which case we get invalid credentials. So everything is working correctly. Let's end on a green, run them again. Six tests, 15 assertions. Okay, so great stuff. In the next one, what we're gonna do, now that we've got everything into the state we wanted in, is we're gonna continue uh, with the security side of things, except authentication is now taken care of. From now, we're next gonna look at authorization, i.e. Uh, what roles does a user have? What permissions does that user have? And allowing certain users to be able to do certain things that other users won't be allowed to do. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.